Thank you very much. This is a great crowd. Hey, this is this is impressive. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And it's fun so close. Keeps you warm. And we want to not only keep you warm, we want to light a fire under George Bush to get this country going again. I wear this red ribbon to signalize my solidarity with those suffering from AIDS and make a commitment to cure that scourge. Use the power of the presidency to do everything we can. And I want to say since, uh, since I am in Boston here and I am the only at least partial Irishman running for president this year, I have to cite the fact that my great-grandfather came from Ireland and was naturalized in Boston before he moved to San Francisco. So, whatever that's worth, it's the puck here that may connect those last few votes here. We're fighting some pretty powerful forces. And, again, what is the Democratic Party? Is this a party of, of uh, quasi-Republicans, of uh, business tax breaks? No, this is a party of just regular people, like you're in this massive crowd. Is it 10,000? It's a huge number here. And this has been the party of change. It's been the party of new ideas. It's been the party of social justice. And you're not going to get social justice with just playing to the easy, quick hit with a little tax lollipop for this business and a little tax lollipop of a dollar a day like Clinton wants. We have to rededicate ourselves to social and economic justice. That's what is holding us back as a people, not tax breaks. It's the deficit in our commitment to each other and to our kids and to our environment. That's going to make America competitive. I always say when I talk to people, because you haven't heard the whole story, I'm not going to go through my record in California other than to say that it was and is equivalent to the eighth largest economy in the world. And during my eight years, we were able to take California from the third highest tax state to the 24th. And Clinton and Songus can't even come close to that. And the same, at the same time, we created two million... Two million new jobs, which are more jobs than Mr. Bush has been able to create in the four years he's been around for the entire country. So there's a record there. We're not asking you to read my lips. I'm asking you to read my record. Read my commitment. Now, I know I haven't... There's a lot of the, the television media here, and I want to thank you. I don't often see you people. So thank you very much. And you see, we got a system here, and I'm not trying to just maintain it. I'm trying to change it. I'm trying to get it to work for the people for whom it's not working. And when we see people without jobs, when we see wages going down, when we see people without health care, there's only one reason for that. The people in charge don't care, don't know, or not doing anything about it, and so should be removed. That's the message we got to send. If you think it's okay, if you really think it's okay out there, then you got at least two candidates to vote for. Maybe three. If it's, you want a little bit of a marginal change, you have a couple of candidates. But if you believe, you've been being, if you believe, and not you believe, you feel being ripped off lied to and that you want real change you got the candidacy right here this is the cause this is the movement to take back america and how do we do it we don't do it with the same old stuff and it's not that i don't know how to do that i mean i've raised more money than mr clinton and mr Songus. i know how to do it and i know it doesn't work and what's the proof it doesn't work just look just look 40 million people don't have any health care Millions of people are without jobs. Millions, tens of millions are working part-time and are getting crummy wages. Crummy wages. You got people over in Germany, they're making $22 an hour. They got full health care. How come? We're richer. We're just as smart. We work just as hard. It's we got some politicians down there that don't care, don't know, or won't act. 
And we want them back. That's what this election's all about. It's leadership. And you don't get leadership if you're trying to figure out how to get a leader. And you say, now here's what you have to do. To get the television, to get the paper, to put you on the front page, you have to collect millions and millions of dollars. And the way you get it is to go to the people who write you a thousand buck check at a time, and you'll get plenty of money, plenty of coverage, and nothing will happen. Because nothing has happened. And that's what we have to notice. It isn't that one check is so bad, it's that hour after hour, day after day, we have politicians who are spending all their time with people who are not like you. And therefore they're responding to problems not like yours. Now let's just be sure I haven't overstated it. How many people here have never given a thousand dollars to a politician? Raise your hands, will you? Raise your hands. Keep them high just for a second. Incredible. Well, there you have it. You are the kind of people that successful presidential candidates don't spend any time with. And that's why nothing changes. And that's why you get ripped off, lied to, and neglected. And together, today, we're going to change that. We want people in this country to realize that Boston and Massachusetts stands for progress, for inclusion, for commitment to social justice, and we the people can do it. We the people can take it back. This is a campaign. I'm proud to stand up for working people and the rights of organized labor. I, I'm glad that in California we defeated a right to work law. And I think it's a real issue that Mr. Clinton not only has a right to work state, an anti-labor record, no civil rights act, and the worst environmental record of any significant state in this country. That's the difference. You see, you got a choice here, a real choice. And people are getting a raw deal because they don't have the power. Look what's happened. In the last 10 years, those at the top, the chief executives of the top corporations, they have increased the gap between what they make and what the people working for them make. It's now 150 to 1. In Japan, it's 25 to 1. In Europe, it's 30 to 1. And in America, it's the greatest growing gap. And there's only one reason for that. The government is on the side of those at the top who pay for their campaigns and keep them in office. And until we can change that and take it back, we're going to get poorer. We're not going to get more equal. We're not going to get social and economic justice. Take it back, America. Take it back, Massachusetts. It's ours. And we won. Now. Look, hey, America grew in the 80s. It got richer. It's just that it went to fewer and fewer people. That's what's happening. Concentration at the top. And it just so happens that those at the top, the top 1%, they're paying for the campaigns. And not only do they pay for the campaigns, when you show the media, hey, here's my card, here's my hand, I've got all these thousand dollar checks. Okay, we'll give you a picture in the paper every day for the next 90 days. Incredible. But I'll tell you this, they're now watching. After we won in Maine, after we won in Colorado, after we won in Nevada, people are paying attention. We may not have their money. We don't have all the incumbent senators and congressmen. We don't have in this campaign all those politicians in Washington who spend their late evenings figure out how to raise their pay, how to bounce their checks, and how to live in a lifestyle totally different from the people that pay their salaries. They're not servants. They're potentates. And that's what I want to change. we have got to change that if you want the difference. Yeah, you can get jobs. I've said two ways, two major issues on how to get some jobs in this state, in this country. Number one, we're wasting half the energy that we're buying, half the oil and half the electricity. We're sending out $50 billion to foreign countries to buy oil. We could put that money to work, hiring people to make a more efficient economy, double painting windows, retrofitting buildings, redoing and re-engineering heating and cooling and motors. And that would put tens of thousands of people to work right here. And tens of 
millions of people to work throughout this country. See, so energy efficiency. People say, well, wait a minute, environment, energy, no. Environment, energy, efficiency, the three E's. They all go together to produce a fourth E, an elegant economy.